Hi, my name is Dr. Eric Runkel. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Horticulture at Michigan State University, and I'm going to be talking about applying paclobutrazole to bedding plants. Paclobutrazole is one of five common active ingredients in plant growth retardant products. It has a moderately strong effect on inhibiting extension growth of plants. I use the term extension growth to refer to the elongation of plant stems, leaves, and petioles. Because of its relatively strong effect on plants, paclobutrazole is generally used on plants with moderate to high vigor. Paclobutrazole is effective when applied as a foliar spray, as a liner or plug dip, as a sprench, or as a drench. A liner or plug dip is an application method in which a finished tray of young plants is placed in a PGR solution so that the tray is approximately half immersed. Plants typically sit in the PGR solution for 15 or 20 seconds so that it saturates most of the media from the bottom up. A sprench is a hybrid between a spray and a drench where the volume of the sprench is about four times that of a spray so that some of the solution runs into the media. Applications of paclobutrazole are most effective when the PGR makes contact with plant stems, the growing media, or both. There are several PGR products that contain paclobutrazole, including Bonsai, Paxol, Piccolo, and Piccolo 10XC. We at Michigan State have performed research on all these PGRs over the years, and our research shows that PGRs with the same active ingredient have similar effects on plants when delivered at the same rate and time. We can see an example of that in chrysanthemum, as shown here. This is the cultivar Ashley, and a single drench application was made to plants at 1, 2, or 4 parts per million of Piccolo or Piccolo 10XC. Non-treated plants are here on the left. As the photo shows, plants responded very similarly to the same active amount of ingredient. Of the various PGRs that contain paclobutrazole, Piccolo 10XC is the newest. It is unique in that it contains 10 times the concentration of other paclobutrazole products. This means that the amount of product used to make a solution is one-tenth that of other products. This feature can make handling of the PGR easier, especially for larger growers. Another feature of this product is that the active ingredient dissolves in tank solutions so that once a loose solution is mixed, no further agitation is required. I'm now going to show some examples of how different application methods can be used for paclobutrazole. The information provided here is based on research performed at Michigan State. Now there are a lot of factors that can influence plant responses to PGRs, so that whenever guidelines are provided, be sure to consider your own growing conditions and crops grown to determine appropriate rates for your desired responses. We've done a lot of work with liner and plug dips and have generally found that two to four parts per million is a good starting point for a rate on bedding plants with moderate vigor. A higher rate, such as four to eight parts per million, may be more appropriate for vigorous varieties. This photo shows the response of Petunia Wave Purple Classic to Piccolo as a liner dip. Non-treated control plants are on the left, followed by plants that received a four, eight, or 12 part per million dip. The upper show photo shows plants four weeks after application when grown at constant 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and the bottom photo shows plants two weeks later. As you can see, this vigorous variety requires a fairly high dip rate to obtain a desirable response. Regardless of the rate that is used, be sure to make dip applications to young plants that have moist media, not wet or dry media. This is because the amount of PGR solution that is absorbed by plants depends on the moisture of the media, and so the drier the media, the more PGR solution that is absorbed. Plant responses will therefore be stronger with the dry media and diminished with the wet media. Paclobutrazole is sometimes used as a foliar spray to inhibit subsequent extension growth. Coming up with a general spray rate is difficult since there are so many factors that need to be considered. However, as a starting point, a single spray at 5 to 10 parts can be appropriate for bedding plants with moderate vigor. For aggressive varieties, at least twice that may be necessary to obtain a desirable result. Appropriate rates also tend to increase as temperatures and light levels increase. The photo on the right shows the effects of a single spray of piccolo at up to 100 parts per million on an easy wave petunia and an angelonia, both that are moderately vigorous plants. A single spray at 25 parts per million had a fairly strong effect on inhibiting extension growth of both plants. For some crops, repeated sprays may be necessary to obtain a desired response, but when possible, wait at least two weeks between applications, since it can take at least a week before the response of the PGR is apparent. 
Growers are increasingly using drenches of paclobutrazole on spring crops. Drenches have a long-lasting effect, so it is especially important to determine and apply appropriate rates. On bedding plants, a starting drench rate is two parts per million, but I've seen higher or lower rates used successfully depending on the crop and growing conditions. This photo shows responses of a tall snapdragon variety to a Piccolo 10XC spray or drench. Here, even a 20 part per million spray had little effect on plant height at flower, partly because the effect of the spray wore off over time. In contrast, as little as a 2.5 part drench had a strong and long lasting effect. With drenches, it is important to be consistent with the volume applied to ensure consistent and repeatable results. For many crops, an early drench application, such as one to two weeks after transplant, produces good results. Let's make a few comparisons now between sprays and drenches. Generally, sprays are more appropriate for crops that will be transplanted, such as plugs and liners, and for finished plants that are intended to be transplanted by the consumer into the garden. Because drenches can last for a long time, they are better suited for crops that are already in their final container, such as hanging baskets. Late drench applications to landscape plants should be avoided whenever possible, since a PGR effect can persist into the landscape. We've conducted PGR trials comparing sprays to drenches, and generally speaking, rates appropriate for drenches are roughly one-tenth that needed for a spray. The photo shows Angelonia again with a single application of Piccolo as a spray from 25 to 100 parts, or as a drench at 2.5 or 5 parts. Desirable responses can be obtained with either application method, although the drench treatment will probably have a longer lasting effect. As with all PGRs, growers are advised to perform their own trials to determine appropriate rates for their growing conditions and specific crops. More information on PGRs can be obtained from a variety of sources, such as the floriculture, floriculture website at Michigan State. I'd like to thank funding from private horticulture and PGR companies, especially Fine Americas, and grower organizations who have supported this research. I'd also like to recognize current and former graduate students and research technicians for their assistance in conducting the PGR studies reported. Thanks for your attention and best wishes for successful use of Paclobutrazole.